like I love when I saw Shakari, um, Sh- Shakari Shakari Richardson when she went to um to nationals back in Oregon, and before she went to nationals, she called for the United States to have like a meeting about the compensation because before the nationals had happened, USA track and field they said that for the next I think ten years that there will be track meets, the national track meets will be in Oregon. And I don't know if you know, but Oregon, they raise those prices every single weekend, just for that one weekend, for the athletes to run at. And not all of them are making the same money that she's making. But she put her neck on the line. Before she even won the medals, before she won anything, she was like, no, we need to stand up, talk about this situation, how are we going to help? the athletes who don't make as much money as she does. Did you know that not one top 10 athlete from the United States went to that meeting? That's the first problem. Everyone is trying to protect their money, right? Everyone who has an endorsement deal is trying to protect their money. And I don't blame them. I'm not about to go. I just got this money. Sometimes, like, sometimes there's some athletes that's not even making, like, $50,000 on their endorsement money. And at any given moment, a company like Adidas, Nike, Puma, please, I, yo, I know y'all about to listen to this. They might find these archives. Listen, I'll take an endorsement deal any day. But what I'm trying to say is they can take your money at any given moment if you're not performing because it's a business. and You got to respect the business. But also, you can't bad talk them either. So if they don't want to go to that meeting, even in the greater good, and you know it is the greater good, for you to go to that meeting and talk to the talk to people and talk to each other and be like, yo, how can we help each other so we don't get low ball because they double and triple the prices of the hotel rooms just for that weekend because nothing else goes on in Oregon. Had you had it like in Texas, it'd be cool. But what I'm trying to say is like no one with the money or who's already got it is going to advocate for anybody else to get theirs. You know, even if some people deserve to get even a little bit especially when it comes to endorsements uh, and other kind of stuff. But the meets, a lot you see a lot more paid meets now. So, like, the Diamond League is really great right now. Uh, it's, starting to, it's starting to come more into the United States, more meets in the United States where top athletes get into, the, um, into those meets to be able to get paid, and the pay has been increasing. So that's been really, really great. Uh, I know at Worlds, I think the, the, the person who wins the, the meet, Probably like fifty thousand dollars if you were if you were to win, but they were also doing like a point system. So if you go to many Diamond League games and you place or you win X amount of games at these at those Diamond League games that it was going on throughout the whole year, you get a bonus. Um, that's how this really works now. But I've been saying this for years. The United States got to start like a little bit of like a track league. It's got to be like some sort of like track league where it's like a point system. Like give it something like say one team can have no allows. All right, you have no allows, but I have like two other good 200 meter runners. We beat you in points. They get second and third. We still beat you in points. No allows to only score 10 points for you. You know what I mean? Like make it a point system. Make it something where people are like, hey, yo, if this is going to be good or allow sports betting. Get more eyes and attention to it. Do it like you do a horse racing. There's plenty of ideas that you can easily do to expand this sport to a little, for it to be a little bit more exciting for people to pay more tickets. Because in Europe, it's popping. Track is popping in Europe. It's pure athletics. Track is popping. But in the United States, I feel like the only way to get them to gravitate their attention to it, low-key is really for like sports betting. And the athletes got to be able to help each other. Because even the ones who have it, because if everyone everyone can be complaining who don't have it, because that's all we do. You know, if I don't have it, I'm going to find somebody else who don't got it. I'm going to find somebody else who don't got it. But the people who got it is going to sit there and just look at me like, hey, man, just, just keep working. Man, bro, you was once in my seat. You need to help me out. But I think sports betting will definitely should be and kind of treat it like horse racing. And what I mean by that is, like, when you go to horse racing, you could put a horse in a box and be like, okay, I'm boxing this guy because I think he might get fourth or third or second. And they still make money off that. 
you don't have to be predicting because you know some people be like why would i predict on track i know no allows is going to win this race or i know christian coleman is going to win this race so why would i bet if i know i'm going to lose and the only way for me to make money is if someone just up and be spectacular and beats them but as to me i think you got to treat it like horse racing and that's the only way you're going to be able to do it respectively Yo, for those that's listening, for those that's watching, there's a lot of knowledge just dropped right there. Mm-hmm. Y'all see this USA track? People up top somehow get hold of this. Take notes, man. They need to. They need to improve this because I man, feel there's plenty of things they can do, man. There's plenty of things they can do. This sport is not a dying sport. It's the most pure sport out there. You got jab throwers, hammer throwers, and then it will turn more attention to not just the sprints because everyone be like, oh, you run track? Oh, you run the 100 meter? You look at somebody be like, nah, man, I, I throw jab. How you have sports betting? You know how many people sports bet on pickleball? You think they care about the pickleball players? They sports betting on pickleball, man. They, You know how like people be doing like the whole draft fantasy and stuff like that? I learned about more pl- basketball players for me doing draft, I started doing draft fantasy for the first time ever because I never used to be able to do it. Because I always wanted to do like other stuff with it. But I started learning about players I ain't never know. I was like, this guy's in the NBA? Who is this? I started doing stats. I'm like, oh, he's kind of nice. Let me put him on my team. Like, if you have that kind of thing where they drafting people or they going up and you're seeing a sports bet line on heat three of 200 meters in a semifinal. Okay, who's in it? Okay, what's how many times have they ran this this time? Was this time win aided? Okay, I'm not betting on him. I'm betting on somebody else. And then they start going to people's discography of what they ran, or they start betting on people like, oh, this person has never run a race. Who the hell is he? Why is he here? I might bet on him because he might be a, a wild horse and he might win me some money. And you start learning about other athletes and just the ones that they want you to learn about. It's just a simple way to expand your sport. 